Hi everyone, today's video is going to be my empties for the last two months. I don't feel like there's as much in here as there has been in previous episodes of this, but uh, let's just dive right in. The first largest item on top is this body wash by Live Clean. So this is their coconut milk body wash and it lathers and it foams and it cleans and does all the good stuff for a body wash, but I don't actually feel like it smells like coconut. It definitely doesn't smell like that artificial coconut scent that we've been using for years that we all just assume is coconut in like our body washes and lotions. I, I don't even know how to describe this. I just don't feel like it's coconut to me. It smells good, but it's not coconut. Anyway, I do really enjoy Live Clean products, so I did like this. Okay, next up is this Nivea Micellar uh, Skin Breathe, it's a weird term. Uh, dry it's for dry and sensitive skin so this is basically like a regular micelle or micellar water that Bioderma makes or um, Garnier makes except I don't like this one uh, there's just something a little bit off about this it definitely doesn't work nearly as good as the Bioderma one that I adore and use all the time I did want to use this one up because I had received it in PR even if it's not as good as the other things that I have I didn't want to waste the product, but I just found it didn't remove my makeup residue nearly as well as the Bioderma one does. And in fact, I actually felt that this burned my eyes a little bit. It left me with a slight stinging tight sensation on my eyes, which was really bizarre because I'm really not that sensitive, but this just, I mean, it wasn't painful enough that I wasn't going to finish it up but I just don't like this. So I've, unfortunately, I've got another tube of this, probably for regular skin as opposed to the dry and sensitive one that I'm using right now. And I'll get through it because it's fine enough at the end of the day, but I would, this was sent to me in PR, so I can't say I would repurchase it, but I would never go pick this up with my own volition. I've got some wipes here. These are the Neutrogena Hydrating Makeup Removing Wipes. Hydrating are the best. I talk about these every time, so I'm gonna cut this one short, but if you want a makeup remover uh, wipe that is the best, it's this one. Hey, I've got another Live Clean body <laughs> wash in here. This is the Vanilla Oatmeal scent, and this one does smell like vanilla and oatmeal. More on the oatmeal side of things, actually. There's a little soft edge of vanilla, but it is more oatmeal-y than vanilla. Really nice, love these, use them all the time. Holy heck, this really is going to be a fast empties video. I don't know what happened this month. Uh, nail polish remover. Um, I've had a few comments that I apparently go through nail polish remover quite quickly. I don't know what to say. I only apply my nail polish once a week uh, and it lasts for an entire seven days. If I am doing nail polish swatches, I feel like I would go through a little bit more of this because if I get like an OPI collection, for example, I easily swatch 12 nail polish, sometimes 15, and that's a lot of remover. Uh, I like the Quo one quite a bit. It's easily accessible for me at Shoppers Drug Mart and I always get it when it's on sale because why pay full price on something that you're gonna be constantly using? So I do prefer the regular one now. I didn't love the hydrating one and the strengthening one I thought was okay, but I was also worried that it was making my nails a little bit too strong and not not necessarily brittle, but just a little bit too strong that if they ever should collide against something, if they bent a little bit, I felt like they were snapping more because the strengthening was making them harder. And I, I want my nails at the, end to be, at the end of the day to be strong, but still somewhat malleable because if they just collide against something and then snap, I mean, that's no good. So I do really like the regular one and I've got like two or three more bottles sitting in my medicine chest in my guest bathroom right now because that's where I remove my nail polish. I have a face wash here. This one is from Tarte. It's their Rainforest of the Sea Deep Dive Cleansing Gel. And honestly, I don't really have a lasting impression of this face wash. Uh, the smell is not necessarily up my alley. It's more of like a, I want to say like a medicinal herbal type scent. It's just, it's not that appealing to me. I mean, it worked fine. It lasts quite a long time because this is a really large bottle. There's a, uh, how many mils are in here? 150 mils, which is pretty decent. Um, this was sent to me in PR, so I wouldn't go out and repurchase it again because there are other face washes that I prefer, but uh, it was fine. Okay, two makeup removers in here. So this is the Marcel Gentle Makeup Remover for Sensitive Eyes, which is my absolute favorite, and this is the same damn thing. Uh, I just made a mistake one time and bought like six or seven of the mini bottles without, because I bought them online, without realizing that they were not the full size bottle, which is really frustrating because while they're cute and small and good for travel, it's also incredibly wasteful because I always have one particular travel sized bottle that I always bring with me every time. So unfortunately I'm gonna be going through these like mad for the next few months. 
Um, but this is my favorite makeup remover. It's the only one I purchased at this point. It does the most the most out of everything that I've ever tried. It gets everything off of my face. Um, and I don't use micellar waters to remove makeup, by the way. I only use those to clean up after the fact, because sometimes with an oil-based remover, you're left with a little bit of an oily residue, and I like to use a micellar water to cleanse that, cleanse that off afterwards. Um, but I can't rave enough about the Marcel makeup remover. I mean, <laughs> I say this every time, but I've probably gone through, I don't know, 30 bottles at this point in my life. I've been using it for, I think, at least 15 years. This stuff is the best. I have another makeup remover here. So this was a Sephora Collections um, Cleansing Oil in Balm. And I bought this quite a while ago during one of their Sephora sales just because I wanted to give it a shot. I do like to remove my face makeup with an oil cleanser, um, but I wanted I thought the balm would just be something interesting to try. And it was neat. It's like a waxy paste that's really emollient. So when you put it on your face and rub it around, it turns into this oil-based remover, which is really cool because traveling with a solid is much easier than traveling with a liquid, um, if that's something that you're worried about. Um, but I just, I don't feel like I got a ton of uses out of this. It did last me several months, but I feel like an oil tube will last me so much longer than a balm like this. And I do really like the Sephora Collection Cleansing Oil. I think that thing is fantastic. It works really, really well. The only thing I don't like about that bottle is I don't like the scent. The scent is just like old lipsticks. It's not appealing. So I thought, that this thing would smell like that because it's the same brand. But no, this smells amazing. It's like, it's fruity, uh, I wanna say cherry-like, but it's not that artificial cherry scent because I hate that smell. This is like cherries and raspberries. It smells so freaking good and I wish that they'd put this scent into their regular oil cleanser because I would enjoy it so much more. I, I wouldn't repurchase this one just because, um, I don't know, the format wasn't necessarily something I want to continue using. It was nice to try, but the smell is what got me. That's the best part of this thing. It smells so good. Now, please, Sephora, just put this scent into your regular oil cleanser, because I'm going to keep buying the regular oil cleanser, but I can't stand the smell of it. It's just bleh. I have a moisturizer here. This is by Avon. This is their Skin So Soft. That makes me smile every time because Skin So Soft, I feel like, has been around for so long. My mom used to buy Avon back in like the 90s and I feel like we always had Skin So Soft somewhere in the house. So this is the Aqua Express Moisturizing Gel and I really enjoy this. I really like Avon's skincare in general. I feel like it's hydrating, it smells good, and it just really works on my skin. And the scent on this one was um, fairly aquatic, which is something I really enjoy. And just clean and fresh. And because this is like a, um, a gel formula, it does really sink into my skin really well and quickly too. I'm not a huge fan of putting on body moisturizer and then having like your clothing stick to you. It's just such an uncomfortable feeling. But unfortunately, it seems to be like one of those inevitable things that you just kind of have to deal with in life. Thankfully though, this one sinks in much quicker and I didn't really get as much of that sticking sensation to my clothing, so I really like this one. I have a pair of fake lashes here. These are by Kiss. They're part of their blowout range and these are the um, ones called Beehive. I really like these. I think Kiss makes great lashes and they're pretty inexpensive and available easily at the drugstore. You can generally find these at Walmart for really good prices, not only in the US but in Canada as well, which is nice because sometimes the drugstore lashes, I don't know, it feels like a crapshoot. Like some of them just don't work that well, but the Kiss ones have never failed me. I got a lot of uses out of these. Um, I'd have to guess. I'm going to say probably around 10. I'm not really quite sure, but I, I know I wore the Beehive ones quite a bit. And if I look back through my videos, I'm sure I could find out, but I wore these a ton. I really like the volume on them, but they've just started to lose a little bit of their shape and they're getting really clunk, uh, gunked up with lash glue. So I like, I could completely clean them. What the heck hit the window there? And I'm not somebody who's t necessarily going to go in and clean my lashes out completely when I have a whole bunch of other ones that I could just get through. So if you're looking for some inexpensive drugstore lashes, I would recommend Kiss. Practically all of the styles that they make are fantastic. I don't think I've ever encountered a bad one. I have a mascara here that I just finished up this morning. Um, it's just basically gone a little bit too thick for me and I don't like dried out mascara. I prefer something much more fluid. This is the Revlon So Fierce Mascara and it is in the shade Black. 
I really like this. Um, initially, I didn't think I was going to because it's not as wet as most of the mascaras that I really enjoy. It was liquidy enough, but it wasn't sopping wet like I generally like for a mascara. It added a lot of volume. It could tend to go a little bit clumpy, but I usually just brush that out with a lash comb. I think I've been using this for about two or three months now, so it's just time to go. And it is starting to get fairly dried out, which I just, as I just said, I don't like dry mascara. I just, I don't feel like it does anything. I don't know what it is. I know a lot of people love dry mascara, but for me, whenever I'm putting it on, I just feel like it's not sticking to my lashes, which is really frustrating. Anyway, this one was great. Um, I did really enjoy the wand. It's a little bit bigger than what I normally go for, but it does have some sense of a conical wand, which is my preference. And it is plastic bristle brushes, which I've, I think I've accepted the fact that I've gravitated more towards those in recent years. I used to be all about that natural fiber one, but I feel like plastic bristle brushes really grip my lashes much better, and this did a great job of doing that. Next is an eye cream from Nivea. This is part of their Q10 Plus C range. It's anti-wrinkle plus energy. And I'm reading this right now, and the energy has an asterisk beside it. Reduces the look of fine lines and wrinkles for visibly energized looking skin. Okay, well that's not much of a disclaimer. <laughs> uh, I don't believe in eye cream. I don't really know what to say. I try out a lot of eye creams and I don't feel like my under eye area ever looks any different. Like it just never does. I don't suffer from under eye bags. I have a few creases at the edges of my eyes but I am 36 years old so that's to be expected. Wrinkles in general don't really bother me. I know a lot of people are out there like bothered by the fact that they're getting lines on their face but I, I just don't care. Um, and I don't feel like this hydrates my eye area, not that it's especially dry on me, or even removes my wrinkles. So I mean, I use it hoping that it does something, and I say this every single time, but I don't see a difference. So I, I honestly, I have no eye cream out there to recommend because <laughs> I just don't feel like they do anything, and this one was no exception. <laughs> I have a top coat here. This is my much beloved Seiche Vive top coat. I talk about this all the time, but it is my holy grail. This is the thing that makes my nail polish last an entire week without any issue. I'm talking no chipping, very little tip wear at the very edges of my nail. This thing is phenomenal and it makes my nails touch dry within about five minutes and like completely usable within an hour. I, I just didn't know what I was missing in my life before I got a quick dry top coat and the initial one, the initial bottle that I got of Seiche Vive, I got in a PR package probably two or three years ago and that has been one of the most impactful PR items that I have ever received because I have continued to purchase this bottle of nail polish top coat since that day because it is just the best and Again, I didn't know what I was missing out on in my life until I discovered it. I keep bringing this up, but it is not the same thing as Seiche Vite. It's the same brand, but Seiche Vite is a clear tube and Seiche Vive with a V is um, this blue indigo color. And this is more of a gel effect top coat, which means that it, it adds a little bit of a thickness to your nail, which I really enjoy. To my understanding, Seiche Vite has a little bit of problems because it um, causes the nail polish to shrink uh, underneath when you apply it. And this one doesn't have that effect. I haven't actually tried Seiche Vite, but from what I've heard, it does do that. And I've had no issues with Seiche Vive, so I continue to buy this every time that I run out. I'm pretty sure I have three bottles right now in my backup drawer and another one that's open already. This is phenomenal. And lastly, I have two things from Neutrogena. These are both part of their Hydro Boost range. The first one here is their gel cream, completely empty. I love this thing to pieces. I've gone through so many of them over the years and it smells so good too. It's fresh, aquatic, oh, just smells so good. Anyway, the thing that impresses me the most about this gel cream is the fact that it doesn't matter what season it is, it can be the dead of summer or it can be the dead of winter and this works wonders to hydrate my skin. I initially thought it would be too thin for my face in the winter time and it just wouldn't hydrate enough, but I don't know what this stuff is made out of, but it works so well when my skin is super dry. So I like the fact that I can use it throughout any month of the year because in the summertime, it's not too heavy either. It sinks in, it hydrates, it's just wonderful. And I'm pretty sure I've got another one in my closet right now just waiting to be used up. 
I'm finishing other things up first, but this is phenomenal. I can't recommend it enough. Whenever anybody asks me what kind of skincare I recommend, generally people ask me this at work, I always say Neutrogena because I feel like it's just a fail-safe product. And I think people are always expecting me to recommend high-end stuff just because I buy a lot of high-end makeup, but honestly for <laughs> Skincare, I'm fairly cheap. I like the drugstore stuff. Between Neutrogena and Aveeno, I'm practically set. So I recommend this one all the time. And the other one that I have here is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Multivitamin Booster. So I basically use this like a serum, although it doesn't specifically say, oh, it does say that it's a serum. It says 30 mil serum right at the bottom. So I use this as a serum and I really like this one. This one had little balls of product <laughs> dispersed throughout it so it just looked fun to use because whenever you use the pump and the ball came up the tube, it was kind of like this milky white substance in, in the middle of the serum. And this is the better serum I feel that Neutrogena makes um, in the Hydro Boost range. They had another one, I think I finished it probably in my last empties. It was like, um, I mean, it's similar in color to these blue tubes, but it was opaque. And honestly, I didn't feel like that one was different enough from the moisturizer to warrant using the moisturizer and the serum. But this one was different. This one had a little bit more of a tactile substance and I feel like it sank in a little bit better on my face. So I would recommend this particular serum over the other one in the Hydro Boost range. Okay, so that was it. There is nothing left in this bag. That seemed to be a fairly quick and efficient empties. Not a lot of makeup, which is really disappointing. I get really bored with empties videos that are all skincare, but oh, honestly, it's the thing that we finish up the most. So that makes a whole lot of sense why you don't see a ton of makeup in empties. Anyway, I hope you found the mini reviews helpful. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will talk to you next time. Bye.